Welcome to our channel. Today, we bring you a captivating story of determination and success. The Kid Who Created Prada, a story of struggle. This is a tale of a young boy from Italy who faced countless obstacles and challenges, but through sheer grit and perseverance, went on to create one of the most iconic fashion brands in the world, Prada. We will take you on a journey through his life, from his humble beginnings to the heights of the fashion industry. You'll discover how his passion for design and unwavering commitment to excellence propelled him to achieve his dreams, despite the odds. We will take you on a journey through his life, from his humble beginnings to the heights of the fashion industry. You'll discover how his passion for design and unwavering commitment to excellence propelled him to achieve his dreams, despite the odds. Join us as we delve into the inspiring story of The Kid Who Created Prada, A Story of Struggle. Let's get started. Exploring the Origins of Prada In the early 1900s, when leather was all the rage in northern Italy, two brothers named Mario Prada and Martina Prada founded a small leather goods store in Milan. The shop, named for Turley Prada, sold everything from imported English steamer trunks to beautifully crafted handbags and leather accessories. At the time, the Prada brothers could not have predicted the success that their small shop would bring. But their fortunes changed dramatically in 1919, when they were appointed as the official supplier of the Italian royal house. With this honor came the ability to use the House of Savoy coat of arms and knotted rope motif in their trademark emblem. This accolade catapulted Prada into the realm of the Italian aristocracy, and their past became even more fascinating. Despite this prestigious status, Mario Prada held some rather patriarchal views for his time, believing that women should not work outside the home. As a result, he did not hire any of his female relatives to work in the family business. Ironically, his only son had no interest in entering the family trade, leaving the future of the company uncertain. Muccia Prada's Journey to Fashion Icon Status As the 1950s dawned, Mario Prada's moratorium on women joining the family business left the company struggling. However, after he died in 1958, his daughter Luisa Prada stepped up to take control when no one else could. It was during this time that Maria Bianchi, Luisa's daughter, was born into a life of privilege and wealth as the middle child of three. Her father, Luigi Gino Bianchi, owned a successful putting green mower firm. As Maria grew up, her interest in politics and feminism began to take shape. She attended the University of Milan, earning a PhD in political science in 1973. It was there that her ideas shifted towards left-wing politics and feminism. Maria soon joined the Italian Communist Party, regularly distributing flyers at rallies in support of her beliefs. But Maria's interests weren't limited to politics. She also studied mime for five years at Milan's Tetro Piccolo, honing her creative skills and exploring her artistic side. With her unique blend of creativity and activism, Maria Bianchi was destined to make her mark on the world. In 1970, the world of fashion was forever changed when a talented and determined woman joined the Prada family firm. She changed her name and immediately set to work, becoming the manager of one of the company's two remaining boutiques. It was clear from the start that she was destined for greatness. As the years went by, this remarkable woman's star continued to rise. In 1978, she took over as CEO of the company, which had fallen on hard times and was down to just one store. Undeterred, she engaged the help of Patricio Bertelli, an Italian leather goods producer whom she had met the previous year at a trade show. Although her qualifications may have been in question, her sense of style was undeniable. She recognized the potential in Bertella's designs and made him her principal supplier. Together, they breathed new life into the struggling company, turning it into a powerhouse of fashion and design. At the time, the label was primarily known for its leather goods and had been experiencing financial difficulties for years. But under her leadership, it began to thrive once again. Her innovative ideas and fearless approach to business turned the company into a global sensation, and her name became synonymous with style, elegance, and sophistication. The world of fashion would never be the same again. As the fashion industry entered a new era, it seemed that the House of Prada was on the brink of collapse. The competition was fierce, and other brands, such as Gucci, had taken their toll. But then, something remarkable happened. A woman named Muccia Prada stepped in and changed the course of the company forever. With her vision and creative genius, Muccia Prada steered the company toward a new direction, one that was bold, daring, 
and unapologetically different. She embraced the world of Okachu, a fantastical realm where fashion and imagination collided in a breathtaking display of color and texture. As one of the few female fashion designers in the industry, Miuchia Prada was a force to be reckoned with. She fearlessly pushed the boundaries of fashion, influencing the way women dressed and inspiring a generation of designers to follow in her footsteps. The Rise of an Empire Miuchia Prada inherited the family company in 1978 when sales were at $450,000. With Patrizio Bertelli as the business manager, she was able to focus on the creative side of the business. She introduced backpacks and totes made of black nylon, which were initially hard to sell due to high prices and a lack of advertising. However, they later became a commercial success and the company expanded its reach by opening stores in prominent shopping districts worldwide. Prada's designs were known for their clean lines, opulent fabrics, and basic colors, and the label projected an image of anti-status or inverse snobbery. In 1985, Muccia released the classic Prada handbag, which became an overnight sensation due to its practicality, sleek lines, and luxury craftsmanship. Prada's popularity increased when the fashion world took notice of their women's ready-to-wear collection in 1988, with designs featuring dropped waistlines and narrow belts. While revolutionizing the fashion world with her innovative designs, Muccia Prada found love and married Patricio Bertelli. But Bertelli had his role to play in the company, assuming the position of business manager and allowing his wife to focus on what she did best, creating beautiful and functional fashion. Prada's explosive growth and global dominance in the 1990s Prada has cemented its position as one of the most influential fashion houses with its originality and premium status symbol, achieving sales of L70 billion in 1998. Under the guidance of Patrizio Di Marco in the US, the brand gained popularity through the placement of its bags in prominent department stores, while its working class theme became fashionable in the early 1990s. Muccia and Bertelli, who were now married, led a cautious expansion that made Prada products highly sought after. In 1992, Miu Miu was launched, catering to younger consumers and celebrities. Prada won awards from the Council of Fashion Designers of America for accessories, and as a designer of the year, the company's aesthetic shifted in 1996 to become more daring and original, earning praise from journalists for its ugly chic style. Revenue continued to climb, reaching US $674 million in 1997. In March 1999, Prada bought a 51% stake in Helmut Lang's company for US $40 million and later paid Yuson $105 million to acquire full control of Jill Sanderag, an 83% of church and company, an English shoemaker. Prada also formed a joint venture with the Dorigo Group to produce eyewear and joined with LVMH to acquire a 51% stake in Fendi SPA. Prada's acquisitions elevated the company to the top of the luxury goods market in Europe, tripling its revenue from 1996 to L2 trillion. How Prada shifted its focus in the 2000s. In the early 2000s, Prada had a tumultuous time with slowing merger and purchasing activity and mounting debts. However, the company remained resilient and innovative, introducing skincare products in unit doses that quickly gained popularity across the United States, Japan, and Europe. Despite their success, Prada still faced financial struggles, and in a bid to pay off over $850 million in debt, the company planned to list 30% of its shares on the Milan Stock Exchange in June 2001. Unfortunately, the offering stalled due to a decline in luxury goods spending in the US and Japan. To alleviate the pressure from his bankers, the CEO of Prada, Bertelli, sold the company's 25.5% share in Fendi to LVMH, raising only $295 million. In subsequent years, the company sold several of its labels, including Helmut Lang, Amy Fairclough, Guy, and Jill Sander, to private equity firms and fashion companies. Prada continued to experience financial challenges and was still recovering from its Fendi debt. Despite these challenges, Prada remained a significant player in the fashion industry and its fashion shows continued to generate buzz and attention. The 2009 Spring Summer Ready to Wear show was no exception, with models tottering down the catwalk in impossibly high heels. The show quickly made headlines as models stumbled and fell, requiring assistance from spectators. 
Mucia Prada, the designer behind the show, attributed the mishaps to the slippery silk socks inside the shoes, promising that future shoes would have lower heels and sewn-in socks. Ultimately, the shoes were never commercially sold, but the show remains a memorable moment in Prada's history. From 2010 to present, Prada's journey of triumphs and challenges. Prada has undergone many changes and challenges over the years. In 2000, the company introduced skincare products in unit doses to the United States, Japan, and Europe, marketed at a high price of US $100 for a 30-day supply of cleansing lotion. The company planned to list 30% of the company on the Milan Stock Exchange in June 2001 to pay off its massive debt of over US $850 million. However, the offering was slowed down by a decline in spending on luxury goods in the United States and Japan. Prada was forced to sell all of its 25.5% share in Fendi to LVMH to ease the pressure from its bankers. By 2006, the company sold labels such as Helmut Lang, Amy Fairclough, Guy, and Jill Sander to private equity firms and Japanese fashion companies. Prada is still recovering from the Fendi debt, but it has made progress with positive sales since 2018. In 2019, the company announced its commitment to eliminating fur from all of its house brands, and in 2020, it announced that it would no longer use kangaroo leather in its products. Lucia Prada and Patrizio Bertelli named Raf Simons as co-creative director in February 2020. Today, Prada continues to innovate and explore new boundaries in creative design while meeting the demand for ethical products. Thanks for watching.